So, you want to steal our voices and use it to teach AI without paying us. Okay, let's talk. SAG-AFTRA, the Actors Union, is once again on strike. In this video, we're going to break down why the union is striking, what it means for you as a voice actor, or what it means for you as just a general consumer of media. Many people still remember the 2016 strike, which was way more complicated than this one. The 2016 video game strike had numerous issues that made it difficult to follow. In contrast, the current strike is much clearer and straightforward. It essentially boils down to this. Okay, would you guys mind not using our faces, voices, or likenesses to make money without compensating us? Of course not. The ethical and moral implications of such a thing would be bafflingly antagonistic. Okay, great. So if you could just sign this contract- No. So you do want to steal the method by which we make our livelihood and teach artificial intelligence to use them so you could replicate them without our permission or compensation? Well, that would be ridiculous. Nobody wants that. I certainly would be upset if a robot tried to take my job. Amazing. Then we're in agreement. If you could just put that in the contract- Absolutely not. But you're promising that you won't do it? Yes, of course. So you could just put it in the- No. But we need it in writing if we're going to- Not going to happen. You realize that a promise in written form is just called a contract. Snowball's chance in hell. Well, I guess that means we're gonna have to go on strike. Now why on earth would you be so unreasonable? The issue for the Actors Union in 2024 is existential. Actors do not want companies to have the legal ability to take their voices, their livelihood, and make models of them without paying us. Some contracts entirely lack language protecting actors from this, while others have outdated language that could now be interpreted to include AI usage. For example, one company's contracts allow them to simulate, and that's in the contract, that word, an actor's voice to make editing easier. That made sense in the 1980s when they need to sort of mess things around digitally. But today, this could be interpreted to mean that that company could use an actor's voice indefinitely in simulation without compensation. These are the kind of loopholes I discuss in my other videos about the importance of reading contracts and protecting ourselves against AI. To me, this situation is overall baffling. It doesn't make any sense to me why companies would refuse to include protective language in their contracts. Actors are not asking for more money or really significant changes to working conditions. They're simply asking you not to have our voices stolen and used without compensation or to train AI models that'll effectively do the same thing. The ethical and moral grounds are really clear cut here. Unlike the previous strike, which had arguments on both sides about actors wanting more money or different sort of working conditions, like I said, it was much more complicated. This is very cut and dry. And I hope I'm saying that this strike won't last long, but I often feel like I'm punished for being an optimist, so I'll refrain from further predictions. So that's why we're striking. It's basic, easy to solve. There are already contract riders, like those from NAVA, a great organization you should familiarize yourself with, that addresses AI protections. Many companies have signed these agreements without issues. Games are still getting made, nobody's losing money. A complicated legal and bureaucratic structure that's like, well, we have to run this through legal, shouldn't really excuse larger corporations from doing the same. This simple request harms nobody and helps everybody. Usually, I can see both sides of an argument. Most of my friends and colleagues will know that I'll always play devil's advocate, but this one confuses even me. It's really frustrating that it had to come to a strike, but here we are, and that's why. Now, let's talk about what a strike means, as there are many misconceptions about it. Last year, when the same union went on strike for the film and TV contract, I had people accusing me of being a strike breaker, which didn't make sense on my voice acting ads. There's so much misunderstanding and misinformation out there, so it's important to focus on the specific details of a strike. By the time I finish explaining, you'll see how narrow the strike actually is. First, the union, SAG-AFTRA, I'll use both interchangeably, strikes per contract. This means there are several collective bargaining agreements, contracts, under the union's umbrella, including film and TV, commercial, interactive, which includes video games, animation, dubbing, and others. Each has its own rate structure, has its own working conditions and provisions, as well as specific companies signed on to that contract on the production side. When the union says it's on strike, it generally refers to one particular contract, not the whole union. Actors are not prohibited from working in commercials or other genres associated with completely different collective bargaining agreements. Currently, the only contract on strike is the interactive media agreement, which we'll call the video game contract. On top of that, 
Not every video game is struck. Many video game companies have never engaged with the union and are not under a collective bargaining agreement. Sometimes you'll hear, is this a union game? Is this a non-union game? Is this a union project? Is it a non-union project? For non-union projects that have never been union, the union can't strike their games. Therefore, there are games that you're gonna see come out that are outside the union's jurisdiction. Similarly, if an actor isn't in the union, they're not governed by union rules. They're not technically needing to strike anything. However, strike breakers or scabs are generally ostracized by the community, even though the union can't technically punish them. If you're caught breaking the picket line, being a scab, breaking a strike by working on struck projects as a non-union member, not great for your career or your reputation. Additionally, not all games under the union are struck. Some games are grandfathered in because they were in production before the strike, even if they're built under a struck company. If a game or a company signs an interim bargaining agreement providing AI protections, the union will work with them even during a strike. This means that any company at any time can sign an interim agreement and immediately access the same union actors as they did before the strike. It magically becomes unstruck as soon as they sign that agreement. So it's not like there needs to be this giant agreement that happens, any company can say, look, we're cool with the non-AI thing, we'll just sign that, let's move forward, and it's fine. Another important caveat to the strike, if the game is operating under a sort of sub-agreement we call the Low Budget Tiered Interactive Media Agreement, which you can just say is cheaper indie games, it's absolutely not under the strike at all. So all the amazing small budget games, which if you didn't know, can still work with and afford union actors, by the way, are totally safe. To summarize, the Actors' Union is punishing companies that refuse to include AI protections by ordering union actors not to work for specific companies and games. Any company can resume working with union actors by signing an interim agreement with AI protections and it'll all go away when the strike ends and we have a new collective bargaining agreement that includes those AI protections. It's simple, right? Much simpler than the internet makes it out to be. There are additional rules about what actors can and cannot do with struck games. For example, a union actor cannot promote a struck project through conventions, interviews, appearances, etc. This extends beyond acting to make the game successful. You're helping the company make the game successful. They're asking actors not to do that. However, that doesn't mean that actors can't promote non-union games or games outside the union's jurisdiction. The things I was talking about before, games that aren't struck, companies that aren't struck. So when you see someone talking about a game they're working on, it doesn't necessarily mean they're a strike breaker. Publicly breaking a strike is career suicide. Most people would not flaunt that on social media. Furthermore, if you're a streamer, a YouTuber, right? The union, A, probably can't govern you unless you're a union member, and B, they're not saying that you can't play games. As a matter of fact, they want you to play games and keep enjoying it. You should look at SAG-AFTRA's website on the links in the description below for more really detailed information about that. In addition, at that website, you can actually check to see if a project is struck or not struck. There's a handy dandy little form there you can fill out and say, hey, this project number, is it struck or is it not struck? Or you can just call the union and ask them. So actors, you also should be aware that companies may try to find actors who don't understand they're breaking the strike or obfuscate their details so you can't tell it's a struck project. Don't be that actor, okay? Companies might use things like online casting websites, hiding the game information until you're too invested to back out. This happened during the last strike. So when in doubt, go find out. You can always back out. You don't have to work a struck project if you find out suddenly that it's struck. Overall though, Calm down. Most voice acting work is not affected by this strike. If you're not working under the union interactive contract, you don't need to worry. However, the safest and most enforceable way to ensure AI protections is under a union contract. If you, even if you're not union, or the game you're working on, even if it is also not union, want to solidify its status in the union for free, use the link in the description below to get in touch with Nava, who will do this entire process for you and nobody will lose a job anywhere. As a consumer, you might see delays in larger video game releases from struck companies. That sucks, yes, but waiting a few extra months is totally worth it to prevent the acting industry from collapsing due to bad contracts. How can you help as a consumer or just as a regular old person? Show solidarity for actors. This doesn't mean attacking companies on Twitter or joining internet mobs. Please don't do that. Just because you see something online doesn't mean it's true. Good friends of mine have been chased off social media with death threats for trivial, trivial reasons. If you're one of my voice acting students, remember my mantra, stay above the noise. Most online discussions are full of people who don't know what they're talking about. It's a lot of noise. Remember, 
The phrase, going viral, is based on a disease. Be part of the cure, not the sickness. Get educated. Visit the Union website and other links in the description that I'm gonna provide below to learn about the challenges that actors face. An educated ally is a useful ally. If inclined, donate to advocacy groups. My favorite is the National Association of Voice Actors, or NAVA. I've talked about them a ton. They do incredible work for voice actors. They offer free resources for both actors and consumers to clarify industry issues, including webinars. Most importantly, this is what I want you to do above all. Be human. Actors are humans. So are the people at production and gaming companies. Don't judge someone for having a company's logo in their bio. Be patient, be kind, be assertive, but be human. I hope this video clears up some of the confusion about the strike and inspires you to pursue what lights your fire, whether that's voice acting or game development. The world needs great artists on both sides. And the more we work together, the better our art will be. Thanks for taking the time to listen.